everyone, I'm Tanya. I'm the educator for emergency here at West Coast General Hospital. I also do a lot of education pertaining to violence prevention. Um, I facilitate the classrooms and I also um, often do training with restraints. So today we're going to do um, a walkthrough of restraining a patient. So the first thing I want to show you is that we have these nice bins available that will have all the contents that you require to re fully restrain a patient. So I'm just going to go through the contents right now. So this is a Pinnell extender and there should be one of these in the kit and that gets used with the, um, the waist restraint. This here is the waist restraint. So as I mentioned this is the piece that we would utilize with this. Um, you can use up to two waist extenders um, with the waist restraint. So if you have somebody that um, is rather large in the girth, bariatric, um, you can utilize that. This here is the shoulder restraint, or as I like to call them, the later hosen. And this would be also used and applied to the waist restraint. And there should be one of these in your kit. This is your pelvic, pelvic restraint here. Um, and we utilize one of those as well. And that would be applied um, and utilized with the, the waist restraint. Then we have four of the wrist restraints. And I'll just open one up here so you can see it. You'll also have multiple locks and keys in here. And then you should have the, the release key. At least one of these available in here. Sometimes you'll find a couple. And then the final piece that we utilize is um, the um, shoulder strap, or it's called the bed strap specifically. Um, and this can be a really nice tool to help you control your patient. you haven't yet gained control of them uh, so that you can get the limb restraints on and the full restraint system on. And that's your kit. So as an example of a scenario um, that we'll utilize for the setup of the restraints, um, we're going to provide you with an example of a patient that is coming into the ED via ambulance. RCMP are actually in the back of the ambulance with the patient because the patient is highly um, agitated and violent and um, has attempted uh, to harm others. So there's a history of a violence that's reported and credible. So ambulance advise us, get your restraints ready on your bed. Um, probably a good idea also to get some sedation drawn up. Our ETA is going to be five minutes. The first thing that I'm going to do in that situation is I'm going to gather my team. Who do I have to help me in this situation? Some things that I would consider is the use of um, calling security guards. Um, I would utilize my team within the department. I would get my doctor on board because I'm going to need those sedation orders. And perhaps um, if I didn't have enough staff to kind of restrain the patient, I would call upon a med surge staff as well. Okay, so another alternative was that we could kind of call for the code white team, but not officially call the code white. I want to make sure that um, I know who my team members are. I know that uh, there is a designated team leader. Um, I want to make sure that all my team members have roles and responsibilities and know what's expected of them. I want to go in with a plan. So plan A, we're going to fully restrain the patient and then we're going to sedate the patient. And alternatively, um, if you know something didn't go well, I'd have a plan B. So I'm calling RCMP for assistance, perhaps. So you'll notice that there is two types of locks. There's ones that do not have strings. I don't know if you can see that well, just like that. And then there's ones that do have strings. Okay, that's not a manufacturer error that is actually intended. <laughs> so the ones that have strings are more intended for use with like the limbs, okay? And the ones that don't have strings, they would be utilized more for with perhaps the waist restraints, 
okay so it's just a good thing to know the next thing as I'm preparing for my patient that's coming in is I'm gonna start to take the heads off of my locks and I'll have them close by so then as we kind of get ready I can quickly lock all my my restraints so just like that and I'm pulling them off so one of the first things I'll probably pop on is the waist restraint and um, I like to kind of place it kind of midline in the bed, um, kind of approximately where the patient's waist will sit. And how I position it is I, I make sure that these black tabs at the top of the restraint are facing the head of the bed. Okay. I attach the side straps to the bed and I want to make sure that I find something non-moving secure on the bed okay so okay so I'm gonna attach it to this portion uh, this rail not to be confused with this as the side rail we always want it to be something non-moving and this would be considered moving so Janie do you want to apply it on your side as well as tight as we can theoretically go right now okay perfect so normally you would want to see this actually compressed on the stretcher right so that this portion the portion that's actually attached to the bed is really quite snug and is compressing the mattress a certain degree um, obviously where we apply it to our patient it's not going to be um, super snug we want to make sure that our patient still is comfortable and can breathe adequately the next portion I'm going to apply is the pelvic strap okay so this gets applied to the bottom portion and what I do is I will just lift up my waist restraint and bring this through and then I lift up again and you'll see this kind of webbing here the crisscross of the restraints I lift that up and I push, pull that underneath it. So you see how I've lifted up that kind of crisscross webbing there? And now I'm just gonna pull this through. Just like that. And the whole idea of this particular part of the restraint is this helps to prevent the patient from kind of wiggling out the bottom of the bed. So egressing through the bottom of the bed. Make sure that you're not doing this too, too tight because you still, I mean, obviously it's going to be uncomfortable for the patient in their kind of genital area if it's too tight. So I, what I would encourage is have it loose enough um, so that if you had to, you could, you know, pop a urinal in, in underneath it. This is that shoulder strap um, and what will happen is the shoulder strap will get inserted through these tabs here and sometimes these take a little bit of work to kind of get them through so I kind of compress it a little bit and it makes it a little bit easier. So what you want to make sure is that these green kind of pockets here that they're facing upward and so now we've got our waist pelvic and shoulder um, strap all ready to go the next thing that we're going to work on is our limb restraints and when you're preparing um, to receive a patient into restraints and or you've just immediately put them in, um, what I do encourage is just, just get them on as best as you're able. Um, after you give your patient some sedation and they've calmed a bit, you can then go back and kind of reassess all your restraints to make sure that they're, they're properly, properly placed and secure enough. So when we apply a, a, a lower limb restraint, um, there's a couple places where we could apply it. I could actually apply it through here. That's a pretty stable area. Um, Janie over here is um, applying it to part of the frame. And then perhaps, um, that's getting a little far up. I probably wouldn't use that on this particular stretcher. Um, but those are some places that you could place the restraints. 
So Jamie's gonna do it, I think, to there. I'm gonna just do it here so you guys can see how things are done differently. Um, what I'm utilizing is I always use the, the long piece of the restraint to secure to the um, bed, okay? And again, we know that we're not gonna get this perfect exactly right away, but once the patient is fully restrained, we can, we can adjust things. And I always perform a tug test just to make sure that it, the, the, the locking mechanism has actually captured. So the patient has brought, been brought in and she has now been placed on the bed. I'm gonna show you how to utilize the bed strap. This particular strap can be really great for trying to control a patient's torso um, while the remainder, i.e. the limbs, can be restrained. So it helps prevent the patient from sitting upright, um, really helps to control that torso. So I'm gonna slip it under her head just like that. And I like to kind of kind of make sure I have equal ends kind of hanging. And then I would bring it along. And again, we'd have somebody kind of securing her arms in the meantime. And I would just bring this underneath and up like this to the head of the bed. Again, repeating over the top and under the arms. And I can hold this and control the patient's torso. Now keep in mind, we haven't controlled her limbs. She can easily hit or kick at this point, but I can really control her torso so that she can't sit up and move nearly as much, okay? And if you have limited resources or limited um, people to assist, perhaps it's the middle of the night, there's not many people on, on shift, you can actually secure this to something stationary at the head of the bed, um, and that will release you to be able to go and assist with restraining the patient elsewhere. Something nice that you can do for patients if they are um, really finding it compressing on the back of their neck, you can just lift up your head there. You can just bring the two ends underneath it and what that does is it takes the pressure off the back of the neck. Okay, now really keep in mind, this is just a temporizing measure. It's intended so that um, we can secure Jamie, or the patient, sorry, um, or control her until we can get all the other restraint system on. Once we get all the other restraint system on, then um, this, this portion would be removed. So it's only temporary. So now that we've got her torso controlled with a bed strap, um, we would ensure that we have a person placed at each limb controlling the limb. So what I'll do is I'll show you some techniques to control limbs. Um, one that I like to utilize for the legs is the just draping right over. So if you're the person that is controlling the limbs so that the staff, another staff member can get the restraints on, I just drape myself like this, okay? I'm obviously gonna be very cognizant that she still can bring her knee up and try to kick me. I'm also gonna be very cognizant that her hands are here and she could grab my hair or try to punch out at me, okay? But um, we're hoping that the people or the staff members on the upper limbs are controlling that adequately, okay? So this is usually how I do this. Um, some other techniques is kind of like this, or I've actually seen this as well, okay? So now we're gonna place the limb restraints to her lower legs. So again, I have somebody securing the legs so that I don't get injured. I'm gonna pop this underneath here, or I can do it this way even, it doesn't really matter which way I, I uh, place it. Okay, so just like that, like that. Now, if I'm in a if I'm in a situation where I just have to get the restraints on, I may not do this portion quite yet. Um, I might just get the restraints on and then get my patient um, um, sedated and then kind of come back to it. But this particular portion creates added strength. Uh, so it's definitely gonna be harder for the patient to, to maneuver out of the restraint if this is used. 
So I take the, the short end, I insert it through the little loop here, apply a lock, and then secure it like that. Tug test. Another thing I like to do if your person <coughs> tends to do exactly what this person's doing and, and Andrew's at risk for getting kicked because she can still kick outward um, is I will take these two ends here and I will secure them as well and that's going to help to limit um, her ability to kick outwards. If you have a, a patient that is extremely bariatric or perhaps um, they are very edematous in their lower limbs from heart disease, um, what they recommend, and, and you can't actually physically put the straps around that limb, what they recommend is just to use this, the, this portion just to create a bit of a, um, some comfort and then you will take this portion through the little loop and place a lock underneath and then that would be how you secure your limb. So you're not focusing on connecting the Velcro, you're just using it um, to create a bit of a barrier. So you're just kind of wrapping it as much as you can around the limb and then you're using the strap to secure it. And another thing to always consider is please make sure, and this is just having that trauma-informed kind of perspective, um, is that you don't want to have the legs too far apart um, because if this is somebody that's experienced some trauma in their past we're going to be triggering that response again uh, so try to keep the legs fairly close together in terms of the arms usually what i like to do is i tuck my hand underneath the elbows and I kind of do a little bit of an upward motion, so I immobilize that elbow, kind of locking it, and a downward motion on the wrist. So kind of upward here, downward there, and that immobilizes the arm. Again, angling slightly to match the contour of the arm and making sure you still have good contact with your velcro. And then utilizing the strap, to provide some added strength. And I would recommend doing it as far down on the limb as you can because if you do it up here, that person can actually then slide their arm up because it's wider up here, right? So that person could actually slide potentially their arm out of that restraint. If your person is somebody that tends to do a bucking motion, so they're bucking <coughs> in the bed, you can actually take these ends and it will help to control their limbs as well and you would be able to secure it here as well with a locking device. I'm gonna work on applying the waist restraint. So I'm gonna use two buttons for this and these are the ones, like I say, you're using without the strings. And I distance them uh, I, I put a, a grommet space in between them and then what I would do is I would apply this so that it is secure enough that she's not going to be able to get out of it but comfortable enough that it's not going to impair her breathing or cut off any circulation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the um, pelvic restraint and again as I mentioned earlier just make sure that it's not too tight the whole purpose of this is that it's just to help prevent the egress out of the bottom of the bed so I think that would probably be comfortable enough and just to remember you can um, with the locking system you can put up to four layers of fabric okay but just remember to always um, do your your lock check then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this portion down and over. So this is the part of the shoulder, just like this. Okay, take my locking device, come underneath, pop it up. And I'm while I'm kind of pushing upward with it, I'm kind of compressing the fabric. I'm gonna take the lock and apply it. Again, on this side. Okay. 
Now, if I didn't secure these side pieces here, what'll happen is if she was able to, she'd be able to take this arm and kind of wiggle out through here. So what you wanna do is, this is where you'll apply this. And I probably could have gone probably one grommet a little tighter here. But what I'm gonna do is take this and through those little tabs underneath, I'm just gonna take this through. Sorry, Janie. There we go, like that. And again, repeating the process on this side here. And I can go on top or I could go through it as well. Just like that. And I'll lock it just so you can see. And I would just repeat the process on that side. So if she tried to get through, it's gonna be really hard for her to wiggle her arm through and weasel out of the um, shoulder strap. Okay, so I'm just showing you on here how to find the uh, resources you need for restraints um, and documentation. So when we have someone who's on restraints, they require this documentation. They have an initiation record um, and then also the monitoring. Um, if it's an emergency situation, you can put the restraints on and then get an order for it. Ideally though, you need an order for restraints before you apply them. So once you um, get your restraints on, this is your monitoring record and it tells you on the side here how often to do it and what you should be checking for. Um, depending on if you have all the restraints on the patient. You're uh, looking for the type of restraints, the respiratory status, sedation scale, limb status, behavior, and um, any other nursing interventions that you're doing. So this is what you would document on. Other resources on here, for so delirium's on here, your VBAC is on here. The behavioral care plans are also on this uh, internet learning hub. The Pinnell kits are stored in both the ICU and emergency clean utility room or on med surge in the sling room next to the elevators. 